we know then to start the trivia? All right, live uh, overview. Look there at Woodbridge, Virginia. That's where our crew is this morning for the Zip Trip. Yeah, we see Tony and we see Holly and a special guest this morning. So let's check in with the crew. Good morning, guys. County, Woodbridge. We are at Stonebridge at Potomac Town Center, which is a, a, a beautiful development here. It's what you see in a lot of these uh, areas now, the town yeah. center with restaurants and retail space and, and uh, some park space and all that. I mean, you can really never leave this right. area. That's right. <laughs> it's got That's everything, right. everything that you need. I think they were cheering because the sun went back behind the clouds. Yeah, we like it. We like <laughs> we when like the sun it. goes behind yeah. the clouds. Joining us this morning uh, is uh, from Prince William County, uh, Frank Principe. Uh, did I pronounce it right? That's correct. Okay. Okay, very good. Uh, he is the uh, Woodbridge Magisterial District Supervisor in his third term. Thanks for coming out this morning. Thanks for having us. Very happy to have you here. Tell us a little bit about Prince William County uh, and, and some of the some of the things that you're focused on here in terms of improving life for everybody. Sure, sure. Uh, well, first off, everybody should know we we party like this every Friday morning oh, oh, in Woodbridge. Right. That's okay? good to know. Really know Join that. us next week. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, Woodbridge is seeing a great transformation in our. Uh, community, improving the quality of life for everyone who lives here. Uh, we have got five of these different town centers coming up out of the ground. We're widening Route 1, uh, more than a billion and a half dollars being invested right here at home. Uh, improving uh, the number of jobs we have, improving the traffic uh, issues that we have in Northern Virginia, uh, and I just am happy to be a part of it. You talked about the billion and a half dollars that's being invested, and I know that's a combination of private and public funds, that's which right. is always um, a daunting task uh -huh. to get both. Right. How have you gone about doing that? Well, we collaborate as part of a stakeholder public-private partnership uh, effort, uh, where it's a win-win for everybody involved. Uh, and so, with the government, a small amount of government investment, we can match that with the private sector and be able to create Potomac Town Centers like this one. This widening of Route 1, this is something that's been a long time coming, yes. much needed. How long is that project going to take? Do we have a sense of that? 2022. Mark your calendar. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, we will see It'll the end of it. It'll be before you know it. <laughs> it will be. It will be. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, we're widening it to six lanes. We're adding sidewalk and trail. We're undergrounding all the utilities, and we're demolishing the old, ugly buildings. Uh, to boot. Uh, you know, you talk about this vision of a new Woodbridge. Do you find that you need a new Woodbridge because you want to attract more people here or because there are already so many people that are coming here, you need to do something? I think it's both, actually. Yeah. You know, we're growing at 3 or 4% a year, right? Uh, our demographics are changing radically every day, uh, and we need to keep up with that movement of people coming into Prince William. We've got to provide them affordable housing. We've got to get them a job. We've got to have a premier education for their kids. Uh, and it's all part of that vision of a new Woodbridge. All right. Yeah. You think you can provide us with some correct answers for trivia? Well, I'm going to try. Let's get started. <laughs> Here we go. Question number one. What county in Northern Virginia was once part of Prince William County? A, Loudoun, B, Fairfax, C, Fauquier, D, Arlington, E, all of the above, F, none of the above. Oh, that's an easy one. That's E. All of the above. All of the above. Man. That's amazing. Uh, Question number two. How many tour buses visit Potomac Mills and nearby IKEA annually? Is it A, over 100, B, over 200, C, over 350, D, over 500, or E, over 1,000? Well, uh, when you think about it, we have more than 10 a week. 50 weeks a year, 52 weeks a year, so it's 500 answer D. He's a mathematician, too. Absolutely right. <laughs> right. Good, it's good. So we have a lot, a lot of visitors in Prince yeah. William. Okay, it's, it's 500 and one crew car on the way home. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, okay, here we go. Eastern Prince William features a town that's name is derived from an Algonquian dog, an Indian term meaning at the end of the water. What town in Eastern Prince William is named of this? Is it Triangle A, B, Dale? City, C. Occoquan, D. Montclair, or E. Dumfries. That's easy too. Uh, Occoquan, historic Occoquan. Exactly. You know which is uh, was another one of our zip trips uh, one year, which is a beautiful.
beautiful, oh, charming yeah. area. Historic, yeah. very clean. Yeah. 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 All right, number four. Prince William County was founded before the United States declared its independence from Great Britain and has noted history dating back to before Captain John Smith. What year was Prince William County founded? Was it A, 1774, B, 1691, C, 1722, D, 1750, or E, 1731? I'm going to say E because Prince William was around at least 40 years before our first birthday. Uh, so I'd say E. You're correct. That's right. That's you are my lifeline to Prince William County, for sure. For sure. We've right. been here a while. Yeah. 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 And still looking good and right. looking better all looking the time. Looking better all the time. Right? All right. Uh, and our last question, Thomas Blackburn, once long-term resident in one of Prince William County's oldest historic sites, Rip on Lodge, right. was a pole bearer at the funeral for what United States president? A. John Adams, B. Abraham Lincoln, C. Thomas Jefferson, D. George Washington, or E. Ulysses S. Grant. What, which one was George? D. Well, the fact that... <laughs> which one D. was the general? George Washington. Yeah. Amazing. All right. Nicely done, man. Yeah. Thank five you. out of five. <laughs> yeah, five out of five. I can see why he's in his third term. Right. <laughs> Thanks for having us down here. We really love Thank it. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. All right, Tucker, let's check in and see what you've got yourself into right now. All right. Thank you so very much. Having a great morning out here in Prince William County. Virginia's for lovers. Apparently it's for everybody. Yeah. I'm a lover. It's for me, right? Lovers of all things. Yep, I'm surrounded by uh, all kinds of friends. What's your name, sir? Tyler. Tyler, nice to meet you. Hey, where'd my little friend go? Come here. Oh, say hi. Just wave. Oh, don't be shy. You said you were watching earlier, right? Right there. Okay, it's okay. You can go over there. Tyler, Thank you for hanging out with me. All right. That's how I feel sometimes, too. All right, uh, real quick, let's do some weather. Uh, we got showers and storms in the forecast, right, Tyler? Yeah. It's going to rain. Aaron, I'm going to toss it into you. Tyler, say hi to Aaron. Yay! Hi, Tyler. Hi, Tucker. It looks great out there. Aw, look at the cute little baby. The little ones are out today. So cute. Zip trips are for everyone. Mm hmm no age restrictions nope. out there. Our crew is at Stonebridge at Potomac Town Center in Woodbridge today. Uh, check in with Tucker, see how things are going so far. Looks like fun, Tuck. Good morning. Yeah, having a great time. Got a great crowd out here, having so much fun. Zip trip to Woodbridge. And uh, we're talking all things Virginia here with Rita. Rita, hey, what's, Tucker. what's your last name? Good morning. Oh, Rita you, met, you remember my name that time. <laughs> I got you. All right, uh, I'm a lover. Do I qualify to come to Virginia? You are a lover. You are super qualified. And we're already here. We're here today to Crush Friday in Prince William County. All right, I saw the shirt. Crush Friday. Tell me what Crush Friday means. Crush Friday means take the long weekend, take that Friday, come to Prince William County and do all the amazing things that there are to do with your family, to have fun, your festivals. Hey, there's a game tonight, the Atomic Nationals, get out to that game. Right. And you can also get on the brand new Potomac Heritage Trail and Boardwalk. Wow. Fun. I didn't even think about it. Now, if I'm a Tuesday guy, that's still okay, right? If you're a Tuesday guy, you can, we can crush Tuesday as well. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, uh, tell me about more things that are fun to do here in Prince William County. You know, all the people around from Maryland, from D.C. want to come down to Prince William County. They want to go shopping. Potomac Mills is the largest shopping outlet in Virginia. Yeah, what do you like you, there? Oh, Ikea. All of it? Everyone. I love all of it, but I, I do spend a lot of time at Ikea. All right, if you like nature, you like getting outdoors, what's, give me some fun things to do here. Oh, we got the uh, Prince William Forest Park, and there's uh, Lisavania State Park. So they're just, again, uh, Weems Museum. So you can go to museums, you can go to music festivals, you can go get uh, ice cream, go to craft beer place, go to a winery. I come, mean, you can right go here forever. Bridge, right? Come awesome. here to Potomac Town Center. Yeah. What better place to be? But again, there are so many ways to crush ride. Give it to them, y'all. I call enthusiasm for the state of Virginia. Yes, and tourism is big business in Prince William County. The economic impact of tourism in Prince William County is $571 million. Wow. 6,500 jobs right here in Prince William County. I love that. I got to get in on that. It's awesome. I mean, it's awesome. I mean, products to sell, but I love it. Yes, and if you love museums, you got to go to the Marine Corps Museum. Yeah. Yay! Yay! All right, Rita, way to bring it. Okay, so uh, you're mostly focused on Prince William County, but of course all of Virginia you want to All of Virginia, yeah. Yeah. and uh, please go to PW 
PWC, visit PWC.com and get all the information about Prince William County or hashtag visit PWC. Get it here. Get okay. it on, Prince William and, County. And uh, that museum. I'm going to go check it out. Oh, yeah. The Marine Corps Museum is awesome. Must Our stop. history, a must stop. Right off 95. Can't miss it. All right. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of weather real quick. Okay. Yeah, we got rain showers and thunderstorms, a possibility midday today. Typically, we get them in the late afternoon this time of year. They're going to get here earlier. There's a satellite radar. You can see the showers now breaking out uh, north and west, out towards Hagerstown, along 81. You guys down to Front Royal and Winchester starting to see those showers move in. Rain will be out of here by late afternoon, and then we're going to clear it out in a beautiful weekend to get to PWC. Yes! Right? Right on, Tucker! Prince William County. Press Friday! Woohoo! Press Friday! Virginia's full of Thank Tucker. you for joining me, Rita. Thanks, Tucker. Yeah. My pleasure. Thank you very much, Tucker. It is time for food. Yes. <laughs> Our taste of the town. <laughs> joining me now is Nelson Head. He is the owner of Dixie Bones Barbecue, and Richard is along with him. Hi, Nelson. How are Tony, you? Nice Richard, to see you. to see you. Thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this looks good. It smells good. It is good. Yeah, it sure <laughs> is good. You guys have been part of the community here for how many years? Oh, we've been in Woodbridge 25 years. 25 years? 25 years, and yeah. you actually have two locations? Two locations. One here in Woodbridge and one in uh, Fredericksburg. Okay, family-run operation? Family-run operation. All right. Yeah. And this is, tell me what style of barbecue you do. Well, you know, Tony, I grew up in Alabama. Okay. And in Alabama, barbecue is a noun. It's something you eat. Yes. It's not something you do. Yes. It's something you eat. So, uh, for 25 years, we've been cooking pork shoulders and ribs and making homemade sides and serving them all over the region from, uh, you know, from Baltimore all the way down to Richmond and everything in between. And that's the thing. It's, you don't, it, it's not just, oh, my goodness, that looks good. It's not just here. You do catering, too. We, ca we cater all over the region, okay. all over the region. It's a big uh, part of what we do. Tell us what you got here. What well, we're what we've done here is we've got a pork shoulder that we cooked last night for about 12 or 14 hours wow. over uh, hickory logs. Uh, the ribs over here, that's my mother's recipe for ribs. Really? Yeah, and uh, we got to serve it only on special occasions with my mother, but then I decided we'd open a restaurant where I could eat them anytime <laughs> I wanted them. So that's and a, more importantly, we can eat them, you too. Can, you can have them anytime that's you right. want them, too. So uh, uh, pork barbecue is a uh, is one of the main substances of the southern barbecue. Right. Um, there's a funny story. I had a place on Capitol Hill uh, for a number of years, and right around the corner from us was the Texas State Society's home office. And they used to call and say, would you bring over beans and stuff for the, because we've ordered barbecue from Texas and like that. Right. Finally, after a while, I got tired of that. So I sent a brisket over when I sent the beans over. Uh -huh. And he called me up after the event. He said, you know, it's okay. He said, we're not going to order barbecue there anymore. You can just bring the biscuit. <laughs> there you go. That's great. <laughs> so I said, that's the best compliment a Texan ever paid to a guy from Alabama. <laughs> Best That's compliment. great. All right, we got... Okay, uh, so what we have here, oh, we've yeah. got macaroni and cheese, yeah. and baked beans, coleslaw, and potato salad. Those are really the main things that, that uh, get served. Right. And the pork barbecue and the ribs and uh, the barbecue sauces. And so All right. We'll just do that. This are you ready to eat a rib? I'm ready to eat. Let's go. Rib, did did Richard, you bring it up? Can these... Are well, well, you guys hungry? Yeah! yeah. All right. I already promised them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, That's why I got the enthusiasm. <laughs> Dixie Bones Barbecue, uh, located in Woodbridge, 13440 Occoquan Road. That's right. That's the corner of Route 1 and Occoquan Road. Okay. Uh -huh. And you're open for lunch and lunch dinner? Lunch and dinner, seven days a week from uh, 11 to uh, 9. All right. If you want to look them up, Dixie Bones Barbecue, uh, that's all the information you, you need. And I, now I'm going to do this. Okay. Uh, we're going to have more on our, on our zip trip from Woodbridge coming up in just a little bit. So stay with us. It's time to eat. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. First, though, it's Friday. That means it's time for Good Day to Hit the Road. That's right, and we are coming to you live from Lincoln, Virginia this morning. You do not want to miss a moment. A special Zip Trip edition of Good Day at 9A starts now. Yeah. Celebrating his seventh, is it your seventh birthday? Absolutely wonderful. Happy yeah. birthday, Desmond. 
And this is her sister Jordan. Jordan, yeah. They got their superhero capes on because they are superheroes in <laughs> every sense of the fly? word. Yeah. Give it a try. Let's see it. Let's Woo, see it. Give cool. it let's see. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You know where you might want to fly? Right on over to that food table. If you think that our crowd's thinned out a little bit, this is why. That barbecue was really popular. Yes. I haven't <laughs> tasted mine yet, but I hope to soon. In fact, coming up in this next hour, we are also going to have another taste of Woodbridge. Another uh, Not Your Average Joe's, I not think, Not Your Average Joe's. That's right, yeah. Tucker, you're going to be trying something? Yeah, I'm going to go make some beer. That's a oh, tough task. Yeah, right up your alley. Yeah. Uh, also, we're going to show you uh, uh, some properties that are available here yeah. in Woodbridge. Uh, a variety of price ranges. We think you'll be pleasantly surprised. In fact, I've already seen some people tweeting that because of our zip trip. They're like, I think I need to go to Woodbridge. So that, <laughs> that segment's going to come in handy. We're also going to have our first responders Friday. Um, we have someone from the National uh, Museum of the Marine Corps coming out because that's a wonderful destination right. here in the Woodbridge area. And, of course, we're going to be in the five must stops. All right, lots of good stuff. First, First, uh, is it time for weather? Yeah, real quick, I'll just mention that it's uh, very warm and humid out early. Our showers and thunderstorms are going to come in midday. Then we'll clear it out late this afternoon, and the cooler and drier air gets in for tonight. Perfect flying weather for a birthday boy. <laughs> right, Desmond? Yeah, let's see it. Super go. Desmond. We'll just say we're dripping this morning, not near necessarily in finesse, but we're dripping. It, it's heavy, uh, but it's a whole lot of fun. So we've got a lot more coming up all throughout two hours of Good Day. Back to you guys in the Woo! studio. And a nice air conditioning. All right. Yeah. And welcome back to the special Fox 5 Zip Trip edition of Good Day DC. Coming to you live from Woodbridge, Virginia on this Friday. And each and every Friday it is a special destination. But there's one thing that always happens on a Friday. We preview this wonderful car. I just wanted to make sure that it was also okay to be ridden in a parade. This is my chance to be homecoming queen, right? Hey, listen, you can indeed ride in style with the Fox 5 Zip Trips this year. All you have to do is go to fox5dc.com slash contest now through August 19th and enter for your chance to win a two-year lease on a new 2019 Acura TLX, just like the one I happen to be through the sunroof on right now. Five finalists will be selected by random drawing on August 20th. All finalists must attend that final Zip Trip event on August 31st in order to be eligible to win. One winner will be selected at that final Zip Trip. All entrants must be 18 years of age or older. The prize is provided by DC area Acura dealers. Complete rules are available at fox5dc.com slash contest. But the keys are in my hand right now. All bribes are taken. No, I'm just kidding. We're having a whole lot of fun out here. If you do happen to hop in your car, not on top of it like I currently am, and you come down to Woodbridge, guess what? We have put together a list of the five must stops that you have to take in while you're here. Number five, Neapsco Creek Boardwalk. Opening in 2019, this beautiful setting will be sure to please the nature lover. You'll be able to take a walk or bike ride along the three quarter mile long boardwalk that connects Ripon Landing Park and the Julie Metz Wetland Preserve. Number four, the National Museum of the Marine Corps. Come check out history seen through the eyes of Marines. Open since 2006, this family-friendly museum has plenty to see and do. Interactive exhibits, a theater, art gallery, and children's gallery. Number three, Tim's River Shore Restaurant and Crab House. This hidden gem sits on the Potomac River with views from all angles. There's an outdoor deck and a tiki bar. Enjoy all of your seafood favorites, crabs, oysters, scallops, shrimp, and so much more. Number two, Ripon Lodge. This historic home was built in 1747 by Richard Blackburn and is one of the oldest known homes in Prince William County. The site consists of 43 acres with formal gardens and walking trails. Come take a tour to learn about the history of the home and its owners. Number one, Lee Sylvania State Park. Lots of activities to do on land and water here. The location along the Potomac River is perfect for kayaking, fishing, and boating. Take a hike or have a picnic. There's even a beach. 
So one of our five must stops was the National Museum of the Marine Corps, and it is such a gem. It is a destination spot that we wanted to learn even more about it, and that's why we have Lynn Ezell here. She's the director of the museum. It's so great to see you. Good morning. Thank you. And you know, one of the things that I love about that museum is it's definitely not one and done. It's a museum that you need to keep going back to. Yeah, it's definitely a work in progress, and it's large enough that even if you're a repeat visitor, you're going to see something that you didn't see the next visit. But we doubled in size in 2017. Which is wonderful and amazing. And the other thing I love about this museum is that it really is great for all ages. Yeah, we market it as everyone's museum. It's an American history museum. And we have a new children's gallery as well. It opened last year. What's the perfect age for the children's gallery? Uh, it's a toddler's to oh, yeah. kindergarten. That's perfect. Perfect. For, so don't let the, the young ones be the reason you don't go, right? Don't don't let that limit you. Also, the other thing that I think is really special about this museum is that it clearly is a place that touches people who have a connection with the Marines, but it also is very moving for people that have no connection. You know, we market the museum as an American history museum, but with that history told through the eyes and deeds of Marines. And what we want to do is put your footsteps in the blueprints of Marines, no matter where they have fought. Uh, so it's, uh, it is great for all ages, all interest levels, uh, but we especially want to make uh, veterans and those who are wearing uniform today feel proud of their service. Kind of give me a quick timeline of when people should go back. Like by this time we're going to have this done. Sure. Um, at the end of each year for the next five years there will be something new to see. So at the end of 2018 we'll open a, a small new gallery and a movie poster exhibit of all things. Fantastic! So you need to go every year from now until then. Now to the end of time. How about just that? Hey listen, also remember that that museum is open every single day except for Christmas and that's it. So it's always there for you. And just free. like the Marines. And, and free. free! Oh yeah, and free. Okay, if you're looking to buy though in the Woodbridge area, Tony has what's on the market right now. Hey Tony. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much, Holly. We've got three properties we're going to show you today on the market. Uh, we're going to start at the, um, I'm not going to say the low end, but the lower price property and work our way up. Joining us now to talk about that is Susan Jacobs. She's a realtor with Samson Properties. Nice to meet you. Thanks nice for coming to out. You. Thank you for having me. Before we talk about these specific properties, tell me a little bit about the market right now in Woodbridge. Oh, my goodness. The market in Woodbridge is hot, hot, hot. Yeah? Yeah. It, in this immediate area where we are, we have approximately... 193 properties for sale. Okay. And what does that mean to you? Not a whole lot unless you know the real estate market. And usually in this market, usually in this area, we have like over close to a thousand houses for sale. Wow. So yeah. that's not a lot that's available that's right not now. Not a lot available. Wow. And the kicker is about 101 properties are selling every month. So that leaves low inventory. Low inventory. Okay. Yeah, low so inventory. it's a buyer's, it's a, it's a seller's market it's right now. It's a seller's market. Seller's for market. Sure. All right. Let's take a look at a couple of different properties. We're going to start with a property on uh, 1601 L Ladue. Is that That's how you it? Ladue Court. Tell us about this one. This is a really, this is a secure building, two bedrooms, two baths. Um, it's in impeccable condition. Um, like I said, a secure building. It also has all kinds of amenities like the pool, the, cl the clubhouse, the exercise room. So a lot to offer for this a condo, which is actually just down the hill from us here. So mm -hmm. we could practically walk to it or it can walk to us and enjoy what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Just under 1,700 square feet. That one's selling for $289.99. Okay, there you go. Uh, next up, uh, Townhouse. Yes. This one is on Marfield Court. Yep. That's not too far from here. That the price on that one is $430,000. Has a gorgeous kitchen. This con, this this is a townhouse, and I will tell you, it is a very spacious townhouse. Um, it has three bedrooms, three full bathrooms, and a finished basement. So it's if you're thinking about townhouse living, I would definitely recommend looking at this one. That sounds absolutely great. Three full and one half bath. All right, very good. Listing number three is on Hickory Falls Court. Uh, and tell us about this one. This is an extreme 
exquisite property. This property is priced at $8.99. It's only a few years old. And again, it has a ton of windows. Um, it backs up to the golf course at Hickory. Wow, old Hickory, beautiful. yes. Um, it has, uh, as you can see, a beautiful um, view from the inside to the outside. Um, I would say if you're looking for a move up location, I would definitely give this one a, a try. This one here is as good as new, if not better. All right, just over 5,800 square feet. That is a very nice looking property. That's what you can uh, find available right now here in Woodbridge. Susan, thank you very yes. much. We do appreciate it. I appreciate for this installment of On the Market. We're going to have more of Zip Trip Friday coming to you from Woodbridge coming up in just a little bit. Stay with us. We'll be right back. I'm going to make it if I try. Oh, uh, yeah. Tony, this was supposed to be my second. Not yours. Oh, this is a good workout. Oh, oh good my stress gosh. relief. Oh, my restoration. <laughs> These zip trips coming out. We're getting a lot of exercise yeah. out here today. Hey, listen, this is what my fitness. They were out here doing some shadow boxing, and we thought maybe they shouldn't be the only ones having some fun. <laughs> or actually, maybe we were just a little bit jealous that Tucker always gets to try everything. Uh, and speaking of that, uh, he's going to try. Is, is this where he's trying beer making, or yeah. what is he doing now? Tucker will be right over. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Back to you, Tucker. All right, guys. Yes, it is time for another edition of Tucker Tries It. And uh, I volunteered to help make beer because that's about one of the most amazing things I've ever encountered in my entire life. But the gentlemen here tell me they've already made the beer. They don't need my help, but I'm going to do something else. All right, sir, your name? Jeff Frederick. All right, Jeff, uh, tell me your establishment. Brew Republic Beer Works in Stonebridge and Woodbridge. You're right here. Right here. You guys make a lot of beer. We make a lot of beer. All right, tell me about the business and tell me what kind of beer in particular you like to make. Well, we make all kinds of styles of beer. We try to have approachable beer, beer that... Anybody can come in and enjoy it, whether you're a craft beer lover, whether you drink big industrial beer. We want to have something for everybody. So we brew all kinds of different styles, from dark to light to hoppy to not so hoppy. Uh, and we continue to innovate and do new things, and as well as keep the things that people like. And maybe one of you can tell me, what's like sort of the trend this summer in beer? German Hefeweizens. Is that where it's at? Yep. Uh, right now we're working on something new. It's a uh, raspberry Berliner Weiss. Raspberry Berliner Weiss. And that's German? Yes. Okay. And what makes that a special beer? Uh, we kettle sour it. And so it's uh, a typical brew day lasts about eight hours. Mm -hmm. uh, the Berliner Weiss takes about 36 hours to do. So it sits in the kettle and sours uh, on lactobacillus, which is a lactic acid producing bacteria. That sounds very complicated. Uh, science. <laughs> yeah. You guys are getting all sciencey on me. I'd just like to tie one on. All right. Tell me about what we're looking at right here. Well, we have a, a flight of beers. We'd love oh. you to try it. Um, now, I heard a rumor, Tucker, yeah. that beers make you gassy. Oh, <laughs> yes. Well, that's but, only because but, but I, I drink them in excess. But I have news for you. <laughs> These beers okay. are less gassy. So what should I try? Try them all. All right. Are you going to take me back to where this all happens? We will. All right. Men, should we do it? Absolutely. All right. Tell me what we're going to back we're to going encounter. We're going to a brew house where we make the beer. Okay. Can I just stay here all day? Yes. Okay. Uh, you guys make a lot of beer back here. How much beer do you make a year? We make about 2,000 barrels, and that continues to rise. We actually can't make beer fast enough. And that's a good problem, a right? A very good problem. Okay, so I am now back where it all happens, and um, I guess I would need a special license. I couldn't just do this at home, right? Well, you do need certain permits, certain authorization from the various governments, so yes, you do. Okay, I was hoping to make beer, but instead you got another job for me. But this is the job you do every day? This is the job that these guys do every day. Okay, tell me what I'm going to do. I got 30 seconds. All right, so what I'm about to do is I'm going to check the carbonation level of the beer that's sitting in the bright tank. Okay. Because we're looking to put this into kegs to okay. send it out to dis distribution and put it in the tap. And if the carbonation's not good, what happens? We sit on it longer to carbonate it. Okay, okay, I got <laughs> it. All right. So you're lubing that up. That, that's just iota. For lack of knowing what else it, to call it. it. It's iota for it's just okay. It's just to keep everything sanitary. All right. Uh, in, the, in the brewing industry, clean, cleanliness and sanitary is key to success. All right. And so what number do you want to know that the beer is ready to go? 203 for? Uh, 2.56. 2.56. What are we looking at? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the sample port. Okay. Quick. we got a few seconds. All right. Here we go. So we're going to let the beer run through. 
Whoa, 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 it's no. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's what we want to do. So we want the beer. Oh, that's a good thing. Yeah, we want. Okay. The, we want the beer. <laughs> we want the zom at the temperature that we have the, the tank set at. So that's our digital board right there. So we want it about 33 degrees. All right. Check accuracy. Should we get a bucket out or something for that? I that's feel so, badly. That's why we have drains. You guys said you, you don't want you, you you can't produce enough of this stuff and you're letting it on the floor. Uh, there's no there's no choice but to dump some of it every now and then. All right. Hey, I thank you guys for letting me try it. I'm gonna try this. Toast to your fine company Cheers. here. Thank you, guys. Thanks for coming out. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, you much. Need a beer. Have a good day. Cheers. Yeah. Well, actually, I'm not leaving. All right. Uh, I'm going to toss it over. I don't know where I'm going, so somebody else take it away. I'm drinking beer now. Wow. <laughs> so oh, going back you. inside, guys. Back we inside got you. you. Talk. Let's get confused after That's he drinks exactly. the beer. Exactly. <laughs> About this time, we'd like to salute our first responders uh, on Fridays. And Tony and Holly are down in Woodbridge on our zip trip. About to do just that. Good morning to both of you. Good morning to you. Yes, it is First Responders Friday. We are in Prince William County this morning coming to you from Woodbridge, uh, where we want to meet some members of the fire department and the Prince William County Police Department. I'm joined now by Sergeant Jonathan Parak and Sergeant Sarah Roll. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Let's Our talk, pleasure. Uh, I want to talk about something that, uh, that you guys want to feature. It's the Worship Watch. Is that what it's called? Yes. What is that? We have a program where the Prince William County Police Department partners with Houses of Worship in order to provide them training on how to keep their facilities safe during uh, and prevent crime, keep them safe from active shooter events. We provide some tips and strategies on how to do that. Boy, and sadly, that is something that is uh, greatly needed these days, uh, not just in houses of worship, but in many different uh, locations. How many houses of worship have taken part in this event so far? Uh, well, we've, actually, we've actually been doing this program for 20 plus years now. So we've had several, um, obviously over the past few years, uh, the attendance in that program has, has spiked. Um, but we encourage um, anyone who goes as a, as a patron to the church or any uh, staff members to come out and, and take part in the training. All right, very good. And if they want to reach out to you to ask about it, how do they do that? We have the information on our Facebook page, so you can visit the Prince William County Police Department Facebook page and how, all the information on when the dates and times for the training and how to register and RSVP are on there. All right, very good. Thank you both for your service. We appreciate it. Holly. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Tony had police watch. I've got fire duty. <laughs> Here they are, Prince William County Fire Department. Members of them, Captain Mike Moore is standing. Man, you guys are getting a round of applause. They love you down here. <laughs> we try. All right, so introduce your counterparts here. So this is Technician 1, Ewan Baird. Technician 1, Joe McLean. Technician 2, Sean McKinnon. And I know you guys wanted to talk a little bit about smoke detectors this morning. Oh, yeah. Smoke detectors, they might be just a few bucks, but just imagine how much you can save with us. How much do you value your family? Twice a year, springtime, fall time. Push to test it. Maybe. So twice a year, check your batteries once a year. Uh, sometimes they have these newer smoke detectors, depending upon where you get them from. Mm -hmm. uh, they can be the 10-year batteries, so always read the labeling. Yeah. Proper installation. I think that one went off because we're all so hot right here this morning too, out here. Too. We feel like we're on fire. But no, real quickly, I did. we did just want to talk real briefly, and I know we don't have much time, about choosing to be a firefighter as your career and why it's a wonderful profession. It's the greatest job in the world. I mean, we go out, we help people. <laughs> oh, we had a little oh. <laughs> from the police department over here. <laughs> no, we. It, it's a lot of training. A lot of time involved, a lot of time away from home, but it's well worth it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you go out, which is what we do. We serve the community. It puts a smile on all of our faces. It's the greatest satisfaction in the world. You know what? It, for both of you all, both police and fire, it, it's high risk, but it's high reward. And that's what, that's what we always find. And so with that, we want to reward you with Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, yes. Because <laughs> there's nothing that's more refreshing than fried dough with icing on a, <laughs> on a Friday. In all seriousness, it's obviously a small token, but Dunkin' Donuts sponsors this because they want to make sure that each and every week we honor people like you who make this choice. We appreciate it. Thank you so Thank much. You. All right. Thank Another you all good very first much. responder yep. Friday. Coming up in just a little bit, uh, Taste of Woodbridge. We're going to feature not your average Joes in just a few moments. So stay with us for that. Back to you guys in the studio. It's like the sign is looming over them right. in the background the whole time. Okay, um, we are going to go back out to Woodbridge right now. Holly has a taste of Woodbridge when we come back. Good morning. Or now. Hey, good morning, all. Now, right now. You know what? We pride ourselves in being not your average morning show. Uh, and on Fridays, it's not your average good 
day, right? Because we always have the special zip trip. And this morning, it is definitely super special as we are live in Woodbridge. And it's just been wonderful here all morning long. And so we're going to check in with Not Your Average Joes to get our taste since we're not our average morning show. Yes. This is Carla Thompson. She's the general manager. And I'm sorry, I want to look at you, but I keep just looking I at know, this. I know, I know. You've been looking at it since <laughs> I put it down. Oh, my gosh. It's so amazing. So please tell me what it is. So this is our... Um, Mimosa punch. It's uh, specific to not your average Joe's. You put in a little absolute citron, little pineapple juice, orange juice, champagne, and then we top it with a base scoop of raspberry sorbet. Now, is this just for looks or is it for trying? It's for trying. Oh, I'm so yes. glad you said that. <laughs> okay, it's okay. delicious. We it sell about a hundred of these. It's from uh, ten to four on Sundays. Really? So yeah. it's a destination spot for brunch yes. on Sundays. Yes. We um, open at ten a.m. You open at ten a.m. Uh -huh. Can you do you take reservations or not? We do. You do. Okay. On open table, you can call the restaurant. However you want to make it, we'll take it. This is fabulous, by the way. I so much so I think I might want to pour it on my head. It's so popular. <laughs> it's Very so popular. good. I can imagine why it's popular. But you have also, when you look at their menu, that it says not your average shows. One of the biggest thing you see is that it's all. You also have a big gluten-free menu. We do. This is our gluten-free menu, and we also have our regular. Your menu. regular one. Yep. So we're. But a big the fact you have a whole menu, the same side as the average one, that's gluten-free, yes. is pretty impressive. Yes. So tell me about some of your other specialties that you got sitting out so here. So for brunch, we always serve the everything flat. Bread. That's our take on the everything bagel. You put everything oh, spice, and then you've got cream cheese, you've got the smoked salmon, tomatoes, celery, uh, scallions, and capers. Delicious again. That we're right now in the midst of a lobster promotion, so nice. we're doing our lobster tower. Which is lobster with vegetables, mango salsa, and fried crispy wontons on top. That sounds really refreshing with the Delicious. mango salsa. Yes, I love very, that. And very light. And then we have our lobster roll. We serve it with a little uh, lemon aioli, some scallions, some onions, fries, and coleslaw. That looks like you could feed three people. It could. It could. It's a lot that of lobster. A, that is a good value yes. right there, right? Good healthy portion. And last but not least. And then I think we, we have one of the best happy hours. We do three sliders for six dollars, three to seven, Monday wow. through Friday. So you you can do, party. yep, crab cake, buffalo tenders, or beef slider. Okay, so what do you like best about this town center? Because Stonebridge at Potomac Town Center is pretty amazing. You guys, are, they're right, they're literally right here. That's not your average Joe's yes. right there. So she didn't have to come far. No, I like the fact that everything is here. You can go supermarket shopping, you can eat, you can get your nails done, there's a spa. Everything you need is in this little center. And it's all better when you started off with this drink. <laughs> That's just my own personal opinion. Yes. Next time, bring two so we can cheers. Okay. Hey, listen, cheers to you. Cheers to this amazing day here in Woodbridge, Virginia. And cheers to the fact that we have another whole hour. We're going to have more. Good day, D.C. continues after the break. Don't go anywhere. Woo. Now I'm going to drink the whole thing. <laughs> Hello, Friday. The must-see moments only on Good Day at 10A. What a welcome in Woodbridge. Our live TV event continues as we highlight more of that Northern Virginia community. Tony, Tucker, Holly have more surprises for us on this Friday's Fox 5 Zip Trip. 10A starts right now. Trip Friday coming to you live from Woodbridge, Virginia. You know, right now I feel like I'm at a Friday night football game. It does uh, feel like at it. the beginning of the season, when it's still really hot. We have got the Freedom High School marching band here. The football team is here. The cheerleaders are here. ROTC program is here. We are kicking it off right with just an amazing crowd this Friday morning. We've got a great crowd. It is a great start to the day, and we've got a lot of good stuff coming up this hour. We'll get to meet some of these young people as we will focus on our hometown team during this hour and our hometown hero coming up in just a little bit. And, of course, we will round it all out when we get yet another taste of Woodbridge. But I'll tell you, all aspects of Woodbridge have tasted really, really good this Friday morning, so far, right? so good. Yeah. All right, we're going to bring you all of that in more. First, we want to get a quick look at the weather. There are some changes coming for the middle part of the day. Here's Tucker Barnes with that. Hey, Tucker. Hey, Tony, and I can already feel the wind picking up. Hey, guys, everybody wave. We're on TV. And this is the cutest one ever. This is Tori. Wave, Tori. Say hi. Hi. How old are you? Uh, Give a great big smile. Yay. 
with that beautiful smile. Hey, uh, Tony mentioned the weather, and we do have some rain showers that will be moving in here in the next couple hours. Uh, they're going to get here earlier today, so more between uh, probably 11 and 3 or 4, and then we'll clear it out this afternoon. I can already feel the wind starting to shift, but you can see that rain moving in from the north and west already along 81, and we'll be approaching the city in the next couple hours. So just be prepared for some showers, perhaps a thunderstorm as that front comes through, and then we'll clear it out tonight. You're in good shape for the Nats game later. And uh, it is hot and sticky, though, at this hour, 84 now in Washington. And uh, once we get the showers and storms out of here, we'll clear it out tonight. It'll be less humid, and it'll be wonderfully refreshing if you want to come down and party in Woodbridge, right? Yeah! Yay! 88 today. There you go. Weekend looks fantastic. Sunshine, both Saturday and Sunday. Low humidity and beautiful. Just like you, right? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Oh, I like that again. Let's do that again. There's your weekend forecast. Okay, and a beautiful weekend. Just come back to me, and then we'll do this. Ready? And a beautiful weekend, just like you. Yes. yes. Yeah, there you go. All right, uh, we're going to toss it over to Hometown Hero and get the latest from Holly and Tony. Wave, everybody. Hey, and we have um, <laughs> someone, two people, I should say, and more, some four-legged friends as well, uh, that we really want to salute this morning. Uh, joining us are Chris and Amanda Beatty. They are the owners of the Semper K-9 Assistance Dogs Program. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank we appreciate you. it. Thank you for having us. So tell us exactly what this is all about. So Semper K-9 is a nonprofit that Crips and I founded in 2014, and we rescue dogs uh, from the shelter, and we train them to be service dogs for disabled veterans at no cost to the veteran and their family. You know, it sounds like such a simple con concept, but I know so much goes into it. And what I also love about this story is this is actually something that started a long time ago <laughs> in terms of the idea. Yes, it did. It did. Chris is a Marine working dog handler. We went to high school together in Atlanta area. and he... You are a high school sweetheart. <laughs> no, 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 no. She didn't like me in high school. She didn't like me. Oh, <laughs> she learned to love me. I learned to love me. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And um, after Chris uh, left the Marine Corps, you know, he had this specialized skill and he didn't really know exactly what he wanted to do with it. And he uh, encountered service dogs at Walter Reed and decided this is what we need to do. So he came home and we started it. <laughs> so Chris, let me. I mean, it's one thing we all we all think of things and go, oh, I'd like to do that. But then to put it in motion is something different. Tell me how you started and how you made that happen. Honestly, the, the need in the community was there. I, I was working and I was meeting veterans who had just common challenges and ailments related to military service and transitioning out of the military. So, you know, I started working with them and working with a couple of dogs, and essentially the program just flourished and kind of took on its own uh, its own locomotion. So so how does it work? Like, do you work with one specific shelter or sh shelters, plural, and then around the we area? We work with uh, Operation Pause from Homes. They're a satellite rescue that's based out of Alexandria. So they have dogs all over the area. They pull from high care shelters all over Virginia, South Carolina. And we work closely with them and work with their volunteers to identify the type of dogs that we're looking for to enter our program. And I just want people to understand real quickly that they heard that they pull from high kill shelters. Yes, so you know what? You're saving these dogs' lives. Absolutely. and then saving the Marines' life as well by training the dogs yes, to help sir. them. Can you introduce, introduce us to the dogs you have? Yeah, of course. So uh, this is Morty. Morty's a golden retriever. Uh, one of our service dogs in training will be graduating in November. Uh, and this is one of uh, another dog, uh, Robin. And Robin's a Chesapeake retriever. Collie mix. Great dogs in training. On the end is Bree. Uh, we also have Bree's sister. We uh, have gotten to the habit of taking like the ten, two best from a really good litter of puppies. And, yes. and Bree's one of them. How are you able to do it at no cost to the veteran? Is it just donations? It's donations. We rely heavily on the community support. Um, we have volunteers. Where we have 150 volunteers on our team. You see some of our team members here and being able to keep our costs low is how we're able to provide it at no cost. But that was important to us is at no cost. So we write grants, we get sponsorships from corporations and businesses in the area and we have great community support here in Prince William and in Woodbridge. If folks want to reach out to you, uh, particularly if they want to make donations or something like that, where do they go? SemperK9.org and Semper on K9. social media it's at SemperK9 everywhere. And at this point how many veterans have you helped? 35? We've, we've placed a little over 30 service dogs. I think uh, we've averaged about 40 veterans a year that we're assisting in some form or fashion. Amazing. Well, thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you for what you yes, two are doing now together both. to the greater community. And with that, we want you to know we have decided you, thank you. should be our hometown hero. <laughs> thank, thank you so you. much.
Great work. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you for having us. All right. So um, I think at this point we're going to send it back into you guys in the loft. We're going to have our uh, hometown team coming up in not too long. Yeah. Very cool. Celebrating all Thank things you. Woodbridge this morning. Mm -hmm. How exciting. They've really come out at Woodbridge. What an exciting Great. and massive crowd today. Right. Really nice. Nice little day trip, really. Thank God. <laughs> Woodbridge this morning, uh, site of today's Friday Zip Trip, down to Prince William County. Nice crowd. Mm -hmm. Nice crowd, good entertainment this morning, lots of music down there. In addition to the trivia, the fun, all the good things you expect from a Zip Trip on Love Friday it. here on Fox 5. First, though, we are headed back to Woodbridge to help celebrate a hometown team. Right now it's uh, 1028, and we'll be right Change back. Step. March. Columbine. March. I'll talk about the school, and then you guys just hang in, and I'll get you right here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Believe me, you can get on the TV. I'd and welcome up. back to Good Day at 10A and our special zip trip that is live in Woodbridge this morning. We are really being treated to just so many special things, a lot of it coming from the young people at Freedom High School. What you're watching right now is uh, some of the students that were members of their ROTC program. They have a very strong ROTC program there. Last year, about 145 students took part in it. They actually started their ROTC program back in 2006. And you're watching them just go through some maneuvers here this morning. They have two different instructors that work with them. But you know, this really is about character building. And in fact, their motto is building better citizens for tomorrow. And it is evident that they are doing just that. And as this is our time to talk about the hometown team, I think that we have really just been enveloped in a team spirit from Freedom High School in general. I mean, it started with the band, we had the cheerleaders, we have ROTC, and right now I have the assistant principal who happens to be standing next to me as well. This is a Jeremy Bird, and you gotta love it when the assistant principal gets some cheers. He must be doing a good job. It's, they don't cheer so much when I walk down the hall. <laughs> You know, it's a large school. You're just under 2,300 students. Yeah. Um, how do you really just keep it positive, keep it educational in today's world? It's a challenge. We try real hard, like you said, to focus on character, to give the students kind of a vision of what they can be, and then to help them actualize that vision. That's kind of what we're after at Freedom. And whether it's ROTC or the band or any of our programs, football team did an amazing job this year. That's what we're after. Well, it's funny that you should bring up the football team because that's who we're talking to in terms of our hometown team this Friday morning. This is Mr. Daryl Overton, and he um, is the coach, the leader, the inspiration behind this team that lost how many games last year? One. We lost one. They lost one game. That means a whole lot of victories from you all. Yes, ma'am. What's the key to your success? Well, like, you know, like Mr. Bird said, preparation. You know, we got guys that's dedicated. You know, we do 5 a.m. practices on Fridays um, in the off season. So, like I said, just being prepared and dedicated, you know, to improving your craft and, like you said, furthering your education in college for free. What's the challenge for you as a coach? Um, the biggest challenge is always, you know, working with young people. Same stuff you said, building character, getting them to see the big picture beyond football, trying to teach life lessons through football. Uh, but the biggest challenge, like you said, is ourselves, you know, just making sure the kids stay on task with life, school, football, all those things. How do, what do you think is the biggest motivator? Like, what's your key that you use in order to get these kids in the winning frame of mind? Uh, my biggest motivator is you know, I'm from here. You know, I have the same why as them. Um, you know, we all kind of share the same struggles on and off the field. And just seeing our young people from our area make it, you know, all the way from the youngest kids to our kids at Freedom, like I said, we share the same struggle. You know what? I think the key is you cultivate the talent, right? You, yep. you have this yes, program. Who are our little wee guys here? Uh, that's our and youth girls. organization. Uh, Playmakers Elite uh, Football. And we actually have girls basketball. But like I said, that's the young kids. And like I said, that's here in Prince William County also. And do you really think that that good sports and that competitive spirit starts at that age? I definitely. I think, like you said, it's part of character. Uh, you, it's one of those things that you can't skip over. Um, you kind of walk a fine line in football where you want to be confident, uh -huh. but you also got to be a good sportsman. You got to be the tough. Time. Yes, you got to be tough out on gotta that field. Be tough. Tell me one thing you love about your coach. Uh, his hat. He's ha <laughs> his hat. He's been eyeballing that hat. He wants it. You tell me one thing you love about your coach. He's just a good coach. One thing you love about your school. My school? Yeah. It's a good school, you know? Good school to be there. What do you love about Woodbridge? I love Woodbridge. It's, it's where I've been always. What do you love about Fox 5? Ooh, I threw you a hard <laughs> one. They're the best news station around here. Oh, my gosh. Woo! And he wins for the best answer ever. <laughs> you know what? That just proves y'all really are 
smart. You are you you got smart kids going on at that high school. All right, so since you are our hometown team, it's a small token, but we want to acknowledge it by giving you hey, our wonderful plaque Thank you. for you to put in your office. Thank you. I don't know if it's as cool as I've had, but it's kind of cool. And guess what? Um, we're sponsored by the Nationals this segment. So we got a whole bunch Look. of tchotchkes, guys. Get Come it. and get, get it. it. Go get it, go get it, go get it. Yes, oh, yeah, yes, the whole yes. <laughs> and it's okay, it's okay. If, if, if you older kids want one too, it's okay. I won't tell anyone if you get one after the break. Oh my gosh. All right, congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you for letting us be a part of the Freedom Eagle spirit yes, this Thank morning. You. It's been awesome. All right, back on into you guys. All right, thank you very much, Maureen. Time for a taste of Woodbridge. We've got two, count them, two establishments for the price of one. Joining us this morning is Ray Pettis. He is the owner of Sweeto Burrito. I like that. Uh, right. Located in Lake Ridge. Also, we are joined by uh, Zach Moat, who is the head brewer and the co-owner of Waters and Brewery, also in Lake Ridge. Good to see yes, you. Yes, sir. Thank thanks you for, for having us. Out. Zach, Ray, yes, thanks sir. for coming out. All right, uh, you guys are actually uh, near each other mm -hmm. uh, in the same shopping center. Yes, exactly, sir. yep. Same Maybe that shopping center right across from me. Yep. Okay. We've got you together for good reason. That's because you guys actually do come together every Thursday. Is that right? That's correct. Yep. Yes. Ray comes over to the tap room. He brings a selection of tacos or mini burritos, and we pair them with beers, uh, whatever we happen to have on tap that day. All right. Sounds good. Ray, let's talk about your burritos and your tacos first all right. of all. Uh, uh, tell us about the, first of all, how long have you been open? How long oh, have you been in the Oh, we've community? been open since uh, May 9th of last year, okay. so 2017, so we're a little uh, over a year in business. And what drew you? to this area? Uh, well, we lived here since 91, so we're a part of the community. My okay. dad's a retired colonel in the Army, so, you know, we just wanted to bring something new and exciting Excellent. to the community and help build a brand here, and we have a unique opportunity to do that. And tell me a little bit about your burritos. Oh, wow. So we have the Rise and Shiner, which is one of our uh, breakfast burritos that mm. has steak, eggs, tater tots, and our cilantro ranch, mm. uh, and that pairs with, uh, you know, some brews that my man Zach brought over here. Well, before Right. You know, yep. So let's do that uh, yep. because you guys, you you pair up a brew and and your brews, you 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 don't distribute beer or anything like that. Not not at all. Everything we brew, we brew at our location, Dillingham Square, and all of it is sold through our tap room. Whether okay. it's uh, into a glass at our bar, in our uh, 32 ounce cans, uh, or in glass growlers. Okay. So you mentioned the breakfast burrito. What's yes, it called sir. again? Uh, it, that is the Rise and Shiner. And so what would you pair with that? Right. So we'll pair the Rise and Shiner, which is a breakfast burrito. It's got steak and eggs and. It might seem a little strange to pair a breakfast burrito with a beer, but we have a nice, big, juicy IPA called Don't Haze Me, Bro. <laughs> <laughs> and it's big, it's soft, it's got a big, juicy, tropical fruit aroma, if you want to smell that. Oh, oh my goodness. That yes. smells like, uh, it smells like uh, Holly Anybody want to taste? Come on in. <laughs> there we go. I, I don't drink. Smell that. Smell that. Ooh. Wow. It's so citrusy. That is so exactly. good. Right. Wow. Yeah. Whenever Tony needs a drinker, he calls me. Yeah. Says, right. Right. <laughs> it's never so, too early. So lots of times you think of an IPA, you think of hops, you think of bitterness. Yeah. Um, this this beer has got almost no bitterness whatsoever. Exactly. Right? I don't like IPAs, but I like this one. Very good. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Rise and shine, friends. friends. <laughs> All right, next up, what do we have? All right, so we have the carnivore, which is our, our manly burrito that has steak, chicken, bacon, our cilantro ranch again, uh, with a hint of sriracha. In it. It's a very good manly burrito. All for right, sure. tell us what you're going to pair That's with. That's right. That. You, got a, you got a big, meaty manly burrito. We'll pair it with our damn beer. This is one of the few beers that's always on tap. Um, it's a golden ale. It's light, dry, refreshing. Um, if, if you're new to craft beer, this is where you want to start. And it's also made with 100% barley that's grown and malted in Virginia uh, by Copper Pot. Give me that damn beer. <laughs> <All right. laughs> we're, we're, we're actually out of time. Just tell me the name really quick. Oh, we have the Buff Chick. And the name really quick of this? We've got our W22 Amber Ale. All right. I'll take all 32 Open ounces. that up. <laughs> Buff Chick. Uh, we're going to have more wrap up this Zip Trip in Woodbridge coming back in just a moment. Stay with Let's go back out to Woodbridge for a final word, guys. Cheers, 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 cheers. Thank you. Cheers to all the people that came out. We really appreciate it. It's been a wonderful time. Yeah, what I've loved about this crowd is that it, it just continued to grow throughout yep. the morning. And the people that came early stayed late. And it's just what a wonderful spirit this community has. Thank you for watching. Thank you, folks.